Hello everyone. Welcome to the another episode of Mind Map. In today's topic we will discuss about coral reefs. Under this topic first of all we will see that what are coral reefs. Then coral reefs as an ecosystem. Conditions for their growth. Types of coral reefs. Benefits of corals. Coral bleaching and threats to coral reefs. And lastly way forward. Now let's know that what are coral reefs. Coral reefs and atolls are significant submarine features. These are formed due to accumulation and compaction of skeletons of lime secreting organisms known as coral polyps. Numerous coral polyps live at a place in groups in the form of colony and form calcareous shells around them. Coral reefs are formed due to formation of one shell upon another shell along submarine platforms at suitable depth. It may be mentioned that coral reefs are more diverse than tropical rainforests. That's why these are called as rainforests of the oceans. Now let's understand that coral reefs as an ecosystem. Coral reefs are some of the most diverse ecosystems in the world. Coral polyps, the animals primarily responsible for building reefs, can take many forms. These can be large reef building colonies, graceful flowing fans, and even small solitary organisms, etc. Because of the diversity of life found in the habitats created by corals, reefs are often called the rainforests of the sea. About 25% of the ocean's fish depend on healthy coral reefs. Fishes and other organisms shelter, find food, reproduce, and rear their young in the many nooks and crannies formed by corals. The Northwest Hawaiian Island coral reefs support more than 7000 species of fishes, invertebrates, plants, sea turtles, birds, and marine mammals. Deep water reefs or mounds are less well known but also support a wide area of sea life in a comparatively barren world. Now let's have a look on conditions for their growth. Coral polyps are temperature sensitive shallow sea animals. Corals are found mainly in the tropical oceans and sea where the mean monthly temperature remains between 18 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius throughout the year. If temperature rises above 30 degrees Celsius, the corals start to bleach and eventually die. Sufficient sunlight should be available for the growth of coral polyps. This sunlight helps polyps indirectly as zooxanthellae need sunlight to manufacture food through photosynthesis. The coral polyps require clean sediment, free water for their growth because muddy water clogs their mouths and they die. Influx of fresh water is also injurious for the survival of corals. The oceanic salinity ranging between 27 ppt and 30 ppt is most ideal for the growth and development of coral polyps. Ocean currents and sea waves are favorable for coral polyps because they bring necessary food supply. There should be pollution-free coastal water for the survival and growth of corals. Now let's see the types of coral reefs. First is fringing reefs. Coral reefs developed along the continental margins or along the islands are called fringing reefs. They are usually attached to coastal land. The other one is barrier reefs. Coral reefs of the coastal platform but parallel to them are called barrier reefs. Barrier reefs are the largest, most extensive, highest and widest reefs of all types of coral reefs. And the last one is atoll reefs. A ring of narrow growing coral is called atoll. Usually there is a lagoon in the middle of coral rings. Atolls are found in Antilles Sea, Red Sea, China Sea, Australian Sea, Indonesian Sea, etc. Now benefits of corals. Coral reefs protect coastlines from storms and erosion. These are largest biogenic calcium carbonate producer. Coral reefs provide habitat for a large variety of animals and plants including avifauna. Provide jobs for local communities and offer opportunities for recreation. They are also a source of food and new medicines. Over half a billion people depend on reefs for food, income and protection. Fishing, diving and snorkeling on and near reefs add hundreds of millions of dollar to local businesses. The net economic value of the world's coral reefs is estimated to be nearly tens of billions of US dollars per year. These ecosystems are culturally important to indigenous people around the world. Coral bleaching and threats to coral reefs. Bleaching or the paling of coral color occur when the densities of zooxanthellae decline and or or the concentration of photosynthetic pigments with the zooxanthellae fall. When corals bleach, they commonly lose 60 to 90 percent of their zooxanthellae, and each zooxanthella may lose 50 to 80 percent of its photosynthetic pigments. If their stress is not too severe, and if it decreases in time, the affected corals usually regain their symbiotic algae within few weeks or months. If zooxanthellae loss is prolonged and depleted zooxanthellae populations do not recover, the coral host eventually dies. Photosynthesis pathways in zooxanthellae are impaired at temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius. 
हायर सी टेम्परेचर और सडन ड्रॉप इन टेम्परेचर कैन कॉज हैवी ब्लीचिंग लेसर और हायर सोलर रेडिएशन कैन इम्पैक्ट फोटो सिंथेसिस विच कैन अफेक्ट द सिम्बायोटिक रिलेशनशिप सडन एक्सपोजर ऑफ कोरल टू एटमोसफेयर कैन पोटेंशियली इंड्यूस कोरल ब्लीचिंग सेडिमेंटेशन कैन ऑल्सो अफेक्ट द ग्रोथ ऑफ कोरल्स फ्रेश वाटर इनफ्लक्स रिड्यूसिंग सेलिनिटी विल ऑल्सो रिड्यूस द ग्रोथ एंथ्रोपोजेनिक फैक्टर्स आर बिकमिंग द मेजर रीजन फॉर कोरल लॉस अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड पॉल्यूशन ग्लोबल वार्मिंग एंड रिवर रन ऑफ वाटर आर ऑल्सो अफेक्टिंग द कोरल रीव्स Now let's know the way forward. It may be mentioned that corals also have recovery characteristics. In the past, in spite of large-scale climatic change like ice age, solar activities, and environmental stresses, corals have managed to survive and recover. Reefs will not become extinct in the long term, but a single bleaching event will take reefs between 30 to 100 years to recover. UNESCO sent reactive monitoring mission to Great Barrier Reef. The mission is at the invitation of Australia and in response to the request made by the World Heritage Committee. Coral reefs are included in Schedule One of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Coastal Regulation Zone Notification and Island Protection Zone Notification regulates the developing activities along the coast. Now it's time for the practice question. Consider the following statements. Statement one. Most of the world's coral reefs are in tropical waters. Statement 2: More than one third of the world's coral reefs are located in the territories of Australia, Indonesia, and Philippines. And the statement 3: Coral reefs host far more number of animal phyla than those hosted by tropical rainforests. You have to select the correct statement with the help of the given options. And options are A1 and 2 only, B3 only, C1 and 3 only, or D1, 2, and 3. And the mains question for the practice is: What are the ideal conditions for coral formation? Explain their significance in aquatic ecosystem. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next session. Till then, Jai Hind.